So good morning and thanks very much for joining us. Uh, my name is Declan McCormack. Um, I'm the project manager with Kodima. Um, and we're going to go through uh, this morning the step-by-step -step guide uh, to calculating CO2 baselines for your local authorities um, and the surrounding region. Um, so on the call this morning or on the webinar this morning, uh, I'm joined my, my, by my colleagues in Kodima and my director, uh, Jerry, our executive engineer, Joe, um, our energy planner, Donna, um, Rebecca, our energy analyst, uh, who's going to give the main presentation this morning and has been doing um, a lot of great work on these baselines. Uh, and Katia, who's our communications and project coordinator, and will also help out if anybody's having any technical trouble. Uh, if you just want to type into the box there, and Katia, where if she can, uh, will try and help you out with that. Um, just a few housekeeping things. If you haven't done already, um, could you type your name um, uh, into the go to meeting there, just so we can see um, uh, who's registered here and if you're asking a question, basically, so your name will come up. Um, and uh, on the Q and A, we're we're going to have the Q and A at the end of all the presentations. Um, so as we go along um, during the presentations. Um, if you could type in your question, you see the little chat box there I've been writing in. Uh, if you could just write your name and organization again, just make it easier, and type in a question um, as we go along. And at the end of the presentations, I'll go back through, and in chronological order, I can go down through the questions. Um, so I'll read your name and your organization out. I'll ask the question. Uh, one of my colleagues will, um, will hopefully answer it. But if you want to elaborate or add anything to the question, um, just unmute yourself at that point. You'll see um, beside your name there, you'll see uh, it's probably grayed out or, or maybe orange with a line through it. Just unmute yourself and uh, introduce yourself and just elaborate or, 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 or comment on the question as we go. So we'll do that at the, the end. Um, so in the moment, I'm going to hand you over to uh, my director, Jerry. Uh, Jerry's going to give a, um, a brief introduction to Kadima um, and then also um, to the CO2 baseline project itself that we're conducting um, in, uh, in cooperation with SEAI through the rd and program. Um, he'll also give a, a very brief um, uh, background into the climate change action plans we're working on at the moment for the Dublin local authorities and how these baselines are essential for that, which is is is... Uh, kind of why we're here today. Um, after Jerry, then um, I'll hand over to Rebecca, and Rebecca will go through the main part of today's webinar, and that will be the step-by-step -step methodology or guide uh, for each of the sections in the CO2 baseline, um, explaining um, the methodology she came up with um, and the reasoning behind that. Um, as I said, when Rebecca finishes her presentation, we'll then have the Q&A, um, and I'll start to read through those questions. And um, once I've read through the questions, again, um, uh, anybody can unmute themselves and ask a question after that. Um, and I will direct it to one of my colleagues here. Um, the webinar itself is uh, being recorded um, and that will be available on our website um, in the coming weeks. Uh, along with the PowerPoints for this and the finished step-by-step -step report will be available up there as well. Um, so uh, that's it for me in terms of introduction. I'm just going to make my director here a presenter and he'll bring you through uh, the backgrounds and the climate change action plans for the Dublin local authorities. So Jerry, you should be able to put your PowerPoints up there. Yeah, I think everybody can see them. Uh, and I'll just Pass over to Jerry now. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar, first of all, and I hope you'll find it useful. Secondly, I'd like to thank uh, SEAI uh, for supporting this work through their Energy RD and D program 2017. So, as you know, this this webinar is about creating greenhouse gas emissions inventories at a local authority level, but the overall context, the national context is set out by the Irish Climate Action and Low Carbon Development Act 2015, and then at the local level, uh, the work we're presenting today is based on the experience we have working with the four Dublin local authorities, which are Fingal County Council, 
Dublin City Council, South Dublin County Council, and Dunleary Rathdown County Council. Uh, Kodima's role in this is to provide technical support for the for the councils and to provide project management in developing the four Dublin local uh, climate action plans. Uh, just very quickly, um, for those of you who, who, who don't know or who Kodima is, Kodima is Dublin's energy agency. We're a team of 14 professionals and we've been in, in the business for about 20 years now and we have a very strong focus on, on climate change, especially in the last uh, few years. Uh, so the whole team is involved in developing these, these, this, this programme, uh, but especially we have two uh, staff members who, who are completely dedicated to the work on climate change, one of them being Rebecca, that will be giving the main presentation today. So to, to give you as a background to the approach we've taken, um, it, it started in, in 2016, two years ago, almost when the, um, the four Dublin local authorities uh, wanted to develop or update their climate change strategies. And through that process, um, which was, was, was conducted really through their four strategic policy committees, uh, it, it seemed to make sense that the four of them should work together because after all, uh, the, the climate change issues are, are transboundary issues and it would make great sense for the, the four of them to work together. So this methodology or the approach was developed by the four uh, strategic policy committees and it, it ended up in having a draft strategy towards climate change action plans for the Dublin local authorities. And this was uh, signed off by the four uh, city and county councils uh, in December and 2016 and January 2017. So that left us with, with the, the very clear approach, uh, which was based on the, the four en environmental strategic policy, policy committees or SPCs. And the overall concept was to have a Dublin regional approach uh, to co collaborate on, on solutions with a synchronized methodology, but, and importantly, for each of the four local authorities to have their own individual action plans reflecting their, their specific um, situations in, in their own local authority area. Uh, however, if the shared methodology makes sense because Dublin has the same kind of four local authorities in Dublin have the same kind of risks and challenges right across the Dublin metropolitan area. Uh, so this led them to into the, the current work we're doing, which is developing uh, four climate mitigation and adaptation plans uh, specific for each of the four Dublin local authorities. And uh, this work is well advanced at this stage. Uh, they, each of the four action plans has broadly got five uh, chapters and an introduction or executive summary and it is a, the second chapter where we are now or the, the baseline emissions inventory that's the subject of today's um, the, today's webinar. Uh, so this leads me to the main part of the, the webinar and I'll hand you back to Declan now who, who will introduce Rebecca. Thanks very much Jerry. Um, so that's great. So hopefully that gave people a very brief introduction to ourselves um, and some of the work we do, but also uh, why we undertook um, to calculate these baselines and the context for that um, in terms of the climate change action plans, or to give them full title, the um, Dublin Local Authority Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Action Plans. Very catchy. Um, so. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Rebecca now, um, who will really get into um, uh, the meat of, of uh, the presentation today. Um, and Rebecca is going to go through each section uh, in the CO2 baseline. Um, she's going to explain the methodology behind that and indeed the data sources uh, which she um, interpreted in order to get the CO2 baselines. So uh, Rebecca, yep, you're up on screen there. So I'll hand over to yourself now. Thanks. Unmuted. Hi, good morning. I'm Rebecca. I've been working with Kodima for the last six months, developing an energy and emissions baseline. This project aims to advance energy and CO2 emissions baseline methodologies in Ireland so that they may be replicated by other local authorities. 
the step-by-step -step report will be available to download from both the Kodima and the CAI website in the coming weeks. This presentation outlines the step-by-step -step methodologies to developing a CO2 emissions baseline. All methodologies have a similar approach, which is gathering data, analyzing the information and finding the energy use, and converting this energy into CO2 emissions. Um, uh, census was used throughout the study as it is a national survey conducted every five years and all Irish households must take part in it. The data available for each sector was analysed to identify the most suitable methodology for the calculations and took into account the fact that these methods must be easy to replicate throughout Ireland so as to allow for future updates. The study has been conducted for different energy consuming and GHG emitting sectors, namely residential, social housing, commercial, which includes both the industry and services sectors, transport, agriculture, municipal, waste and wastewater. Um, so moving on to residential and social housing, Steps 1 to 3 address the process of data collection and processing. Steps 4 and 5 deal with calculating the energy consumption associated with each property using building energy rating information. And step 6 deals with, with the conversion of this data to CO2 emissions. For the residential methodology, steps 1 to 3 relate to data gathering, which is done from the CSO census. This lists all the housing in Ireland by construction type and year built. For the social housing methodology, this is similar to the residential methodology. So steps one to three relate to data gathering, which is done from the local authority's social housing database. And this lists all the social housing in the local authority by construction type, year built, floor area for each unit, and building energy rating if available. To find, the average energy, to find the average energy use, the Building Energy Research Tool developed by SCAI is used and it contains all the data, data from all the registered BER ratings to date, such as energy required for normal use of space heating, hot water, ventilation and lighting per meter squared area of a residential unit. It also provides insight into other data such as type of household, year of construction, location, floor area and fuel use. Um, at the moment there are 698,000 countrywide available BERs. A certificate is required as if a house is being sold, let, is new or has received an energy grant from a CAI. The average energy use is multiplied by the number of units, which will give the total energy use in kilowatt hours. And step six is converting this energy use to CO2 emissions, and this is done by multiplying the energy use by the emission factors, which result in emissions in kilograms CO2. Emission factors are used to convert energy use to CO2 emissions. Emission factors are dependent on the type of fuel, which means that different fuels have different emission factors. Therefore, emissions depend on the fuel, on the type of fuel used. For example, renewable energy, like photovoltaics, would have an emission factor of zero. This means that when energy from renewables are converted to CO2 emissions, they would yield no emissions. Uh, moving on to the commercial, which includes both industry and services sector. The data used for the sectors from the valuation office and energy consumption benchmarks from the Chartered Institution of Building Services and Engineers, SIPSI. The first three steps are data gathering. The first two steps are data gathered from the valuation office. And the third step is data gathered from SIPSI. So the data gathered from the valuation office includes a list of all commercial properties and their respective floor areas. These are broken down into different categories, property use and location. This information is only related with the permission of the local authority and is subject to strict confidentiality terms. In order to assign energy use to each property, energy benchmarks are used from the UK SIPSI guide. 
SIPS is widely used for such an for such an analysis and is the source for reference benchmarks on Irish display energy certificates. This provides typical energy usage per per square meter of floor area for different business categories, and this is gathered from numerous UK surveys. The SIPSI energy use figures are presented in two different ways for this, for both the services and the industry sector. The third step results in the total energy use in kilowatt hours, and this is and this is obtained by multiplying the average energy use by floor area. Industry and services energy use aren't broken down by fuel type in SIPSI. So to find the energy use for both sectors, the national energy use breakdown is used. Energy, national energy use breakdown is used. To find the total emissions in kilograms of CO2, the energy use is multiplied by the emission factor, which results in CO2 emissions. For transport, data for transport was gathered from the National Transport Authority. The NTA have provided Kodima with their appraisal modules, which make part of the regional modeling system for Ireland. This data is the most detailed appraisal of transport emissions available in Ireland and is used by national bodies such as the Environmental Protection Agency. The regional modeling system was developed using a wide range of data sources to represent travel demand and patterns as accurately as possible and is available for periods based on census release dates. The model is a GIS system. It's a geographical information system that contains the different road links and their corresponding emissions. So a basic knowledge of GIS is needed to carry out these steps. The figure shown is a representation of all the road links in the East Regional Model. The NTA hold a regional model for most Irish counties which are listed as the East Regional Model, Southeast, Southwest, Midwest, and the West Regional Model. The second step is identifying the greenhouse gas emissions in transport. As may be seen in the table, a variety of emissions are listed in the NTA model. Therefore, we must select only the greenhouse gas emissions, which are the nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, and methane. The third step is converting these emissions into CO2 to find the total greenhouse gases from transport. For agriculture, the methodology for agriculture is made up of five steps. Steps 1 to 3 address the process of data collection and processing. Steps 4 and 5 deal with calculating the energy consumption and conversion of this data into CO2 emissions. Steps 1 to 3 are data gathering. Step 1 is, gather, is gathering date, the data from CSO, the Census of Agriculture, which presents figures on animal farming, such as the number of cows, sheep, horses, etc. The second step is gathering data from the land parcel identification system. This contains the entire crop farming data, so hectares of cereals, potatoes, hay, etc., and documents documents all the types of crops grown, their locations and areas. This is a spatial mapping system that shows all the farm outlines of land held by farmers receiving payments from the, from the European Union. As there is little energy, little energy data available for agriculture activities in Ireland, energy benchmarks for both Ireland and the UK have to be used. The energy benchmarks used are from Chagisk, UK Carbon Trust and the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs in the UK. The third step is multiplying the average energy use by the land area or livestock unit to find the, to find the total energy use in kilowatt hours. And the fourth and fifth step are similar to previous sectors, which is breaking down the energy use by fuel type and converting these energies into, a, into their emissions, into CO2 emissions. The municipal sector, local authorities are responsible for the energy they use in their buildings, uh, public lighting, and the ve their vehicle fleet. Since 2010, public bodies have been required by Irish law to report on their energy use 
on their energy use and actions taken to reduce consumption. This reporting is done through the Public Sector Monitoring and Reporting System, DM&R. Uh, so the MNR is used to track the local authorities' energy progress towards, towards energy efficiency targets. The second step is to identify all the municipal sectors and to have them grouped. The recommended categories are buildings and facilities, public lighting and municipal fleet. The third step is to find the total energy use from the MNR. And the fourth step is finding the electricity consumption profile to find the public lighting energy use. The fifth and sixth steps are breaking down the energy use by fuel type and then converting these energies into, into CO2 emissions. Waste and wastewater. This section provides the required steps to find emissions from landfill waste and wastewater emissions in Ireland. Uh, this is the methodology for waste and the methodology for wastewater. They both follow the same methodology. The only thing that differs are the data sources. The first three steps are data gathering. For waste, the data is gathered from waste applications in the EPA website, which lists all the licensed landfills in the selected counties, in the selected counties and include registration number, name and location of the site. From the waste applications, the different landfills in a county are found, and each landfill will have an annual report. Within each report is a section called Pollutant Release and Transfer Register, Register PRTR. The PRTR is a reporting system of emissions and lists more than 250 industrial facilities that are involved in environmentally hazardous activities. Each service or facility listed must provide information regarding the amount of pollutants released to air, water and wastewater. And, with, and within the PRTR, you can find the total emissions from waste for the landfill. And these are listed on the left-hand side. So there's methane, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, monoxide and nitrogen oxides. And their totals on the right-hand side. Wastewater data is gathered from wastewater, wastewater treatment plant reports and these reports include information on the total population served and greenhouse gas emissions. Waste, the following steps are common for both waste and wastewater sector. To find the total CO2 equivalent for a landfill or treatment plant, the greenhouse gas emissions are multiplied by emission factors which will result in CO2 equivalents. In some local authority areas or counties, a wastewater treatment plant or landfill may be common to more than one area. So to find the emissions by area, we must first find the CO2 emissions per capita. And this is done by dividing the total CO2 emissions by the population served, which will give a CO2 equivalent. This is then multiplied by the population in an area to give the total emissions in a county. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I will now hand you over to Deck, who will be going through the Q&A portion of the presentation. That's great. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, so everybody's been very shy typing questions in here. I hope it's because they were so engrossed with the step-by-step -step guide. You didn't have time there. Um, so I, I hope that uh, gave everybody a good basis on the uh, the work that we've been doing here and the methodologies that we've developed in order to calculate the baselines uh, for both the municipality and for the wider um, county as well in, in public and private sector. Um, this uh, basically has allowed us then to have a baseline as Jerry went through in our climate change action plans. Um, mostly based on the municipal for the Dublin local authorities to see where they are at the moment um, and set targets to where they have to go and associated glide paths, but also to see in the wider county um, where um, they are at the moment um, and uh, where they have to go in terms of um, 
uh, uh, national targets and what, what needs to be done to get there. And indeed, it lets us um, also demonstrate the proportion that the municipal, uh, the local authorities, um, building services, etc., cetera, um, CO2 uh, output is in comparison to the city or county region. Um, and uh, to show what um, uh, a large task we have ahead of us um, in, in both of these sectors. Um, so we'll, we'll move on to the Q&A now. Um, I don't have any type of questions here at the moment, so um, uh, I'm sure some people would like maybe to go over uh, a few of the areas again or get some clarifications or indeed add any comments. Um, if you do, if you just want to um, unmute yourself there um, and just um, say your name and your organization and just ask the question and then um, I can direct it to um, someone in Kodima here for answering. Now, I have a question up here from um, uh, Annalisa Mills. Uh, I'll just read it out, Annalisa, here, and um, we can elaborate on it then. So, uh, with the energy use in both residential and commercial properties, would it not be possible to access data on units of energy consumed, e.g. from the utility providers, rather than relying on estimates based on average energy use by property type? Um, I don't know, Rebecca, do you want to uh, elaborate on that? Um, I could hand over to Joe and Donna if they have anything to add. I think Joe and Donna would be better to elaborate on this. Uh, I think Donna's going to answer this. So um, it's my colleague Donna, um, who did some work on this um, uh, previously um, on some of the methodologies. So Donna, maybe you could elaborate on that? Just, one, just one moment here, Donna's having a little technical issue. Um, you can answer in mind here, Donna, if you want to. It's easy. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Um, and Lisa, yeah, so the, it's, it's a good question. Um, unfortunately, we don't have access to the data um, from individual utility providers. It's uh, to do with commercial um, sensitive, it's commercially sensitive data, so they don't, they don't actually give it out for individual properties. So the, this is the reason why we have to come up with these methodologies. The closest we can get is, are, are, is the methodology we've uh, devised, is to try and get it down to individual building level, uh, but using estimates and the best available uh, data. There are, I suppose, some new information coming online, like new data coming online all the time, such as the smart metering trials now um, that the CEOR carried out uh, for individual households, but it's not very representative. Um, these are very small trials and only give us an idea of certain households. So hopefully with the new smart rate metering um, rollout, we might get a better idea of actual energy use um, in households. But again, it's about accessing that data and uh, the utility providers actually don't um, have that available for us. So I hope that answers your question. That's great. And it is, um I hope that's uh, elaborated on that. Uh, Annalisa, if you had a follow-up question as well, you can just type it there. But uh, yeah, this is, is something we've come across in all the sectors, um, is breaking that data down to the smallest unit uh, possible. Um, and um, indeed, if, if, if we could get the, the master list from the utility companies and break it down from that, it would be brilliant. But um, it's just not possible. Um, I think it is in other countries. Um, uh, down to a much smaller level than we have here anyway, but unfortunately here it, it isn't at the moment. So um, this is basically the best methodology we've come up with. Um, so uh, I, Brian Cassidy here. Uh, Brian, I'll just read out your question. And the same again, Brian, if you want to comment or elaborate, just to unmute yourself here. Um, so Brian's asking here, um, have you established a baseline for Dublin local authorities? If not established yet, how long will it take? And um, so I presume, Brian, you're asking there um, for the municipal baseline itself, and have we finished that? Um, so I'll just let um, Rebecca answer that. Rebecca, do you want to say that? Yeah. Hi. Yeah, we have, yes, we have established the baseline for Dublin local authorities. We have for all of County Dublin, for all the sectors. I'm not sure if that's 
that's enough there, Deck. Um, yeah, so I, I suppose on, on this um, webinar itself is just for the step-by-step -step, um, methodology, but we have um, uh, also completed the, basically the the, um, uh, the totals for all of these methodologies we, we've gone through, um, or where possible we have um, completed them and broken them down into um, fuel uses, etc., and the CO2 equivalent based on them. So. Um, we, yeah, we have the municipality um, municipal totals, right? so they're going to be submitted to SEI at the end of this week, which is the end of the rd and program. Um, so they'll be made available as soon as SEI have gone through um, the due diligence, etc., with the rd and They'll be made available through SEI and through ourselves. And indeed, we would hope um, in the coming month, um, um, we'd elaborate on them themselves um, into a larger report that, that will hopefully will break down these figures and demonstrate them. Um, and uh, that will be used. You can pair that up with the step-by-step. -step. Uh, it will illustrate how you can use these figures for a baseline. Um, I hope that answers it there, Brian. Um, if you've anything else to add, uh, please do. Um, so is there any other questions there, either typed or um, if anybody wants to just ask them? To just unmute themselves and ask away, or indeed any comments or um, advice. We're, we're always open to advice on how to uh, refine these methodologies, um, because uh, as we said, these are um, methodologies that we've been working on for um, a number of years and refining as we go, um, but we're always open um, uh, to refine them further and to get them more accurate. Um, so I have Karen uh, Gallagher for Fingo. Um, so Karen's asking, will you be going back to revisit the baseline calculation as more refined and accurate information becomes available? Are you just going to have one shot at establishing the baseline? So yeah, that's, I've just hinted at that there. Um, and these baselines have been refined for a number of years. In fact, we started, uh, I think in 05, 06, um, with uh, a number of methodologies um, when there wasn't um, BER information available and uh, other data sets, and we've continually refined them. What we'd like to do, I think, is, is to at least um, get to a point where um, future baselines are directly comparable um, to the ones as we move on so we can track targets, but I, we're always going to be open to refining these, these baselines um, as we go on. Um, how often we do that, again, is uh, determined by the data that's used. So uh, obviously, if it's census data, we're limited then to um, a new census data coming out and indeed uh, the questions they're asking in some of that census. Um, at the moment, we're, we're, we're putting in a submission um, to ask um, certain questions in the next census that will help us to add to this data set. And for other data sets, such as the MNR, um, for the uh, local authorities, these can obviously be updated um, uh, uh, yearly as, as, as the new data is going in, and we can track that as we go. Um, I hope that I know sure your microphone isn't working there, Karen, but I hope that answers the question. Um, I'll just, I have another question here, and forgive me with my pronunciation. Um, Kivan, maybe, or Kivan Kahu, uh, IERC. My sincere apologies <laughs> if I have the pronunciation wrong. Um, so the question is, when measuring progress against the baseline, how will changes in population, weather, commercial activity, and other independent variables be taken into account? Um, again, I might pass this on to Joe, um, um, or, or Donna here maybe, um, who, who, can, who can answer that, um, basically on, um, I, th I suppose uh, using things like um, degree days, um, per capita, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll just hand on to Donna here. Thanks, Dex. Um, so, uh, yeah, so as Dex said, we, it, the, how we measure going forward depends on the data sources and how often um, they are updated. So we, we rely on outside data sources. Of course, we can't, you know, uh, carry out our own kind of census or our own kind of, um, our own kind of questions to that level uh, or that, those kind of in-depth kind of uh, statistics to that level. So 
changes in population, obviously uh, we get that kind of information from the Central Statistics Office and that's represented in census. Uh, whether, again, that's uh, the, whether to, we, we kind of base it on the, so the BERS and those kind of, and that kind of information is adjusted for um, average weather um, information. So we don't want it to change depending on weather year on year because that's not something that we can, I suppose, have actions that our actions can't uh, mitigate like really as uh, that happens due to weather. So people will use more heating as the if it gets cold, etc. And the kind of actions that we have planned won't really be able to help us um, against that. But it's setting the CO2 baseline that's represented above the average year in terms of weather. Uh, commercial activity again that changes the valuation office information that we get will tell us. Uh, who's paying uh, rates for um, per, per meter square floor area, and that will change depending on commercial activity. So if there's more or less commercial activity um, each year, and the valuation office obviously updates this on a yearly basis for rates. Um, and uh, yeah, so any other independent variables we try to take into account, but again, it's rely it's it's de completely dependent on the data sources that we have. So we do try to um, to take in as many into account as many variables as possible. So I hope that answers your question. I'll pass you back over to Death now. Thank you. Thanks a million for that, Donna. Uh, so I'm Donna sharing a microphone here. It's a bit of a changeover. Um, yeah, so it, it, these are always tricky things in terms of um, uh, measuring per capita or, or what way you break it down. I think I, I, I'm right in saying that these figures are, um, uh, would you call them ultimate figures or overall they're not, they're not broken down? Per capita at the moment, they're just totals, uh, is the way I should say. Whereas the M and R at the moment, um, you have a choice of uh, variables you can use. Uh, I know in the the DLAs we're using per capita in order to, to break that down uh, further. Um, so, is there any other questions there? I don't have another um, written question, but um, anybody feel free to uh, unmute themselves there and ask a question. Uh, again, as I said, um, all this information will be going up on the website uh, in the coming weeks um, with the step-by-step -step, uh, reports um, and then hopefully um, in the coming months um, we will have the elaborated DLA baseline reports as well. Um, that will show uh, the results for this and the breakdowns and how that can be used um, in climate change action plans. Um, have I another question here? Oh, I have from Karen. Uh, Karen again, sorry, in, in Fingal. Um, so how far have the other local authorities progressed in their baselines? Um, well, I think that's a question for um, the audience here at the webinar. Um, I wouldn't like to answer it on their behalf. I, I think um, in Dublin, we're, um, because we've been doing this, I suppose we did it originally under a European project in 06. Um, to make um, uh, energy action plans and we continue it since. So I, I, I think we have an advantage in that way in Dublin that we've been working on this for a number of years. Um, I'm not entirely sure um, with a lot of local authorities. I know there have been um, uh, a few around the country that have signed up to the Covenant of Mayors. So the Covenant of Mayors is a voluntary um, uh, agreement um, across uh, the EU. I think there's about seven and a half thousand um, mayors um, or um, um, heads of municipalities have signed up to us uh, to reduce their carbon uh, emissions by 40% by 2030. And as part of this, you have to um, calculate your baseline, uh, both your municipal and your uh, region-wide, and you um, have to develop actions. So I know there's a number of local authorities that have signed up to that, so I would presume they either have or are in the process of creating these baselines. Um, but uh, they can use slightly differing methodologies on that, uh, which is covered under some of the technical guidance in um, the Covenant of the Mayors. Obviously, from our point of view, um, and nationally in terms of local authorities, we would, uh, we'd really like to see if everybody, obviously, and we'd like to think our methodology is good enough for this, but we'd like to see everybody to use the same methodology so we could um, uh, directly compare um, county to county, local authority to local authority, um, this would help both in seeing where we are in relative levels, but also in actions, etc. Because, um, as Jerry said at the start of this, climate change is completely transboundary uh, in terms of mitigation and adaptation. Um, and the more that we can directly compare, 
from local authority uh, to local authority and region to region, and the more we can really um, uh, um, plan um, nationally from the bottom up and also collective bargain back up to the national in terms of funding, et cetera, that we need. Um, so I hope that's it's a bit long-winded there, I know, Karen, but I hope that uh, answers the question. Um, if anybody um, who's on here in the audience uh, has any information to add to that, uh, if you've done your own um, baseline or are in the process or have tried and, and run into difficulty, um, if you just want to uh, uh, unmute yourself and add there or, or indeed type it in. Um, so again, I have no questions lined up in terms of text. If anybody has one um, that they just want to ask, um, and I'll just give a few moments because I know it, it's, it takes a while to find your way around this. Um, if we don't have any follow-up questions, um, um, as I said, this recording will be made available. Uh, we're um, available um, at any time here, uh, so don't hesitate with any questions based on this or indeed the um, climate change action plans in general. Uh, you can find all our details at www.kodima.ie under um, our team, I think the drop down menu is. And um, we all have individual emails there if you just want to drop us an email with a question or uh, just pick up the phone um, and give us a call. We're, we're happy to uh, chat away to you there. So I have no follow up questions here. I'll just give it another couple of moments just in case anybody is formulating the perfect question. Um, and if not, uh, I think we're coming towards the end anyway of the webinar. I would have to wrap it up in the next few. So, um, no, I think we can wrap it up there. There's no questions coming in. So um, uh, it just leaves me to thank everybody again for attending. I hope um, this helped to at least um, start the process uh, of thinking about creating baselines and, and why they're useful um, and some of the methodologies that can be used. And as I said, we're always open to advice and comments to um, refine these methodologies. Um, and I'd just like to thank my colleagues on the call here, and indeed um, uh, Rebecca especially has put a lot of hard work into developing the methodologies and the step-by-steps. Um, so just keep an eye on the website there for um, uh, the information uh, that will be uploaded, and in the next few months, um, some elaborated um, uh, baselines from the four Dublin local authority reports should be up there as well. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll end the webinar there. Thank you.